it's April 13th, 2022. Um, I'm watching CBS this morning. Um, watching somebody by the name, I think it's Jonas something Lieber. I remember Lieber because it's, I mean, that's a German word, but it's also a page in the, in the minutes, I believe. Um, so, um, I'm watching him and like, I'm not the best representative of New York to speak on the good things because I haven't experienced any. Um, Long Island, I've had nice experiences that I can talk about f easily, um, but in New York City, I mean, they haven't allowed me to participate, so I have nothing nice to say. Um, but I am, and, and mostly when I look at the news program, I don't see anything about New York, and I don't see, like, my representatives on the TV speaking. So there was some big, I call it Big Apple event as of yesterday um, that happened. And um, at the end of the day, Governor Kathy Hochul was there. Um, and there in the background behind her, surrounding her, um, were a whole lot of uh, what I would, like the New York Herald D Foundation that surrounds her yesterday on camera with all of those microphones in front of her. I was very happy to see that she has people that support her and that were there for her, I guess, fundamentally to, like, support her free speech um, and her ability to communicate on behalf of the public as their chosen representative. So that was really nice to see. That's a functioning part of what still is remaining of the us in the U.S. and the family estate. Um, while this horrific event went on, um, I'm in a different place at the moment. Um, I'm watching my representatives that I can't find on a day-to-day -day basis and who have um, either not known that I exist or not invested in my future or my success whatsoever. Um, but I'm still their cheerleader regardless because I still have children and I still have flowers in the garden. Um, I have seeds in the garden. Uh, not that I see many options for them, but we're still here. We haven't abandoned the whatever. Um, in I, I, Captain kind of a way, we haven't abandoned the ship, so... Um, I see that he's speaking nicely. He's in charge of MTA, which again, for the God Save the Queen portion... Um, there's importance in his feature position. I was saddened to see that he was hurt. However, it happened. I don't know the backstory of it. Um, but he went on camera not too long ago and it looked like he had been visited by something scary. Um, so I was concerned for him as a piece of the much needed representation in New York. Um, it goes from that story this morning. I'm going to fast forward to, it shows a 19 year old girl and she's very, and her, um, she's, they don't mention about marriage, but she's having a baby. And apparently they had some gender something. So she throws a baseball, he hits it, and blue smoke goes everywhere. And apparently they must be one of these fortunate few um, that actually had a clan of, like, heraldy that took care of them and planned for them and nurtured them because there's a whole bunch of their generational seeds. I guess their Y generation... They're the ones would be asking why. They're like Benjamin. They're about Benjamin's age. So they're um, 
and they have a whole crowd of white kids, which is so, I mean, like, they're so, Benjamin didn't grow up that way, I mean, he, just like myself, was in the middle of this shuffle of, like, you just don't belong, you can't find your people, your clan, your, where you're supposed to be, who accepts you, like, who likes you just because you're white, I mean, it's been a black world in this whatever for my whole life, it feels like, but steadily getting worse from my teenage years. Um, so it's nice to see that somewhere in the world, the, the clansmen and the taking part in a tribe and being able to find one another and celebrate one another's successes exists. It doesn't exist here in New York where I've been held. Um, but I'm glad to see that it exists somewhere still. I mean, it's a sign of hope perhaps. Um, and then it goes from there, um, into this thing about the color purple and some whatever, and the false king and this woman are speaking on this, this color purple and flowers in the garden, whatever. Um, the thing is, is that this is still New York. This is still a rock, paper, scissors area. While I appreciate the journalism and the message in a very, like, flat manner, they've already upstaged my person, my genetic, my heraldy. So this upstaging event, and then I think she goes on to talk about how she was so in love and she wanted to marry a white man and she didn't want to be told she couldn't. Yeah, that's somebody else's story. I got white kids to protect. I'm a white woman. And we're in rock, paper, scissors. So I don't know why for my whole life I've been, like, held in a room for somebody else's ability to break rules of genetics and family heraldry and, like, societal norms that used to be acceptable and normed, but now all of a sudden they become this abnormal, and it's unex... I mean, it's disgusting. I would never repaint the world this way, ever. It is a horrible appearance. Um, so, um, I would, and I don't want my children to have to grow up in this level of insolence, um, and the way that it's just like, it's, they, they've just taken over the voice by storm and like their wants and desires to get in by marrying through some white family member and then gaining some momentum is a, I mean, it's a disgusting pathway, but here we are. And we're so far in, in so many stages of seeding and generational and planning that now it's a full onslaught. It's what it feels like. And it's just like, where do you go for help? I know there's an us that exists in the U S I know they have a management at the moment. It looks like they're surrounded. There's stuff in this Supre U.S. Supreme, the U.S. Supreme Court that's not family, but yet it calls itself whatever. Um, and there's some bad management choices being made. So I'm really unclear how to get the us in the protectors of the family estate and the family genetic and of the equipment that keeps us safe. I'm unclear how to get that back. Um, so there's um, also Gilbert Godfrey passed away. Um, I don't know his backstory at all. Um, I did appreciate, I liked, I believe it or not, I did like the movie Aladdin, but not in support of other things just in a way of, um, for theatrics and its sameness. There was no changing components and disrespecting each other's uniqueness. Um, I find now they have Phantom of the Opera. They've replaced the lead character with, again, it's a white guy playing the Phantom, and now it's a South American or a African-looking actress, and they kiss on stage. It's like, 
everywhere it feels like every art everywhere I look that's what's being thrown is like this mix it's it's disgusting where are my rights to say enough I don't want to see it anymore like you want to go do it go do it in private it's the same thing you play lucky sevens go do it in private I really don't want it in front of me I'm thrown on all of the TV stations it's like this obnoxious campaign I'm like, what is your end plan with this? Because you're going to piss off some really serious people. Is it nuclear warfare? Because that's what it looks like to me, pushing all these buttons all at once. I mean, Jesus Christ. Tonight at 10, 9 central on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. What's better than... Oh, here's, ready, here's the commercial that they're throwing at me this morning. 0% financing on all 2022 Equinox models or get $750 cash allowance. See your local Chevy dealer. This spring on Broadway, resilience blooms into passion, poetry, music, and dance. Fearlessly new, fiercely now, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Now playing. Get tickets today. If you want to talk about intimidation and in forceful use of one's power in the most insidious ways, being that it's like passive aggressive... That's a perfect example. It's also called upstaging. It's a problem. It's in a phase of introduction that has been so played out, it's absolutely disgusting that it's gone on this long. Questa is CBS in New York. Where's the date for when it gets phased back out? CBS Mornings. We have more now on the investigation into the subway shooting here in New York City that injured at least 23 people. Witnesses say a man wearing a gas mask and construction vest opened fire at commuters after throwing a smoke grenade inside a subway car during the morning rush hour. He was on the train as well. Ten of the injured people were shot. The suspect is still on the run at this hour, though police have named a person of interest they are looking for in connection with the investigation. No pictures so far. Just to have a survey of who's shown up and what country they represent since at the moment North America has an issue in an identity crisis, it feels like. As cameras at the station. And I think for the other echelon, like... In 4, 5, 6, it's an identity crisis. In 9, 10, 11, I think it's a gender identity issue. Where the shooting happened, we're not working at the time. Joining us is Jano Lieber, chairman and CEO of the MTA, which runs New York City's subway systems. Jano, good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, tough morning after for New Yorkers today. Uh, a lot of people probably thinking twice before their regular commute. One of the big questions to come out of this is, why don't we have a picture of this gunman? Why weren't the cameras working? Well, actually, they do have photos, and the material that the NYPD has circulated has a variety of different images of him. So all night long, we have 600 cameras on this one line in Brooklyn, um, 2,500 cameras the length of the line. So the cops have been looking overnight at all of the stations, where he got on, where he might have gotten off. There's an enormous... He had airtime yesterday, by the way, at the actual footage with all of the microphones. I know that's important somewhere in the world. That That's like points of importance, uh, a case in point. So um, he was there. This is, I think, the day after in just more like of a highlighter spotlight. Enormous range of video. It's one of the things we've done to make the system safer. We went from 30% camera coverage 
uh, of our 472 stations to 100% camera coverage. So we got a lot of video for the cops to look at, and they're working. Well, but how do you it. explain that on this particular train, the cameras do not appear to be working? Was that just a fluke? Yeah, I think that I think that in the one location by the turnstile, there there was apparently a server problem, which they had been working on the day before. But the bigger issue is there is so much video evidence from all of the stations on this line that. There, there are images of this fellow that are going to be found. We heard that the mayor said that they're now going to double the number of police on patrol, but would that have prevented this from happening, Jano? Don't you actually need officers on the train? Good. It's a very good point, Gail. I've been asking for, you know, since the prior uh, mayoral administration, I've been asking for, can we get the cops, there are a lot of cops in the system, but we want them on the trains and on the platforms where New Yorkers feel like vulnerable. Like federal marshals on a plane. And, well, you know, exactly. The, the, where people feel we know from surveying our riders, and we survey 100,000 riders every month or so, Cops on platforms, cops on trains, that is what makes people feel safe. The mayor has committed to do that. That transition has already been underway since before this incident. But if you have a random person doing a random thing, it's going to be hard to stop even if you do have police. Uh, which raises the question, did the MTA in any way know who this individual was, have him under monitoring, and have any idea of this morning why he chose such a, a far-flung and seemingly random station? I, honestly, Tony, we, we don't have any history with this guy. The NYPD he has a bunch of priors, from what I understand. Uh, so he has some history with law enforcement uh, in general, but we don't have any history with him at the MTA, and there was no reason we would have focused on him in particular. Should New Yorkers feel safe taking the train today? And you know, I think they were like, oh, as I said, when I got on the train with the... This is my favorite part of him standing up for New York in a part of New York that I don't know. Like, I know 9-11 happened. I was here. I just, again... I stay away from the crazy city because they don't want me clearly and nothing good ever happens for me anywhere in there. So um, for 9-11, I saw it all and like I saw pieces of it unfold on TV. I saw them rally together. Again, I don't understand how when they had that horrific event and they could have fixed everything right there and then. Why did they let this continue and drag out and get worse? I have no idea. The governor, the train was full. New Yorkers really, we're in the um, never bet against New York business. It's the essence of who we are. Bounce back after 9-11. I spent a lot of years rebuilding the World Trade Center. People said you wouldn't, they wouldn't move back to lower Manhattan after 9-11. People said New York was dead after Superstorm Sandy and on and on and on. New Yorkers just keep bouncing back. And the subway is the fabric of New York. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to give up our public space that defines New York, that makes New York possible. That's what the subway is. The heroic MTA workers who powered those people out of the station to safety are also heroes. Good qualities of New York were on evidence yesterday as well. That's sort of New York may be down, but never out. You're never out, Gail. Always... Not even close. Yeah. I'm also on the bet on New York business. So yeah. thank you very much, Daniel Lieber. Appreciate Good you being here be this with morning. You. Good to be with you. All right, up next, a woman whose apparent kidnapping triggered a multi-state search now. Here's the thing about Phantom of the Opera. Here it goes. It's a Thursday, 9, 8 central on the CD. The Phantom of the Opera is back on Broadway and better than ever. You're not selling me on the better than never. No, it's not. It's just in a worse phase, in a worse state, and everybody keeps perpetuating it. It's every. It's like unescapable. It's disgusting. Where's my ticket out? Savor each sensation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's epic, soaring masterpiece. There's never been a better time to see Phantom on Broadway. Get tickets at phantomoftheopera.com. At one point, there used to be something called catering to the masses for social engineering and public health safety standards. And then there was like a closet door fetish whatever. What I don't understand is why is why are they completely reversed in 2022? It's so foul. There has been a dramatic new development in a case in California that made... 
Editor, let me show you what we're talking about. See if you can tell why. Yeah, boy. You gotta be so stubborn. Get that from your mother. That is what country should have been like and what I should have been able to enjoy. It's every mother and father's dream. They'll have their children be able to take part in that. It's every child's dream to take part in that, to meet their lifelong whatever, and then have children and move forward. What I don't understand is why that was so hard for the management and the planning committee and the exotic zookeepers to actually get right in my one position. That's what I was robbed at, so something else could upstage in some disgusting event. <laughs> All right, so this clip was shared. Oh my god! The clip was shared online by the 18-year-old future mom. Her name is her name is Anna Calverly. Now, did they get to go to elementary school, middle school, and high school together and grow together like a really nice brood and like traditional extended family? Just curious, because I don't have camaraderie like that, never have. It's been withheld from me. Even when I went to elementary school for a few years with the same class, they disappeared by high school. She, who looks she the runs ball? to him. Yeah, I know. And he runs he's with his, his boys. Friends. He's with his boys, his teammates. Uh, uh, some people who watched it, of course, said that there was a problem. The dad to be runs straight to his baseball teammates to celebrate, and the mom appears <laughs> to get bumped aside, right? So the expectant dad is 19 year old Travis Gober, who attends the University of New Orleans. Carefully posted a follow up video defending Gober. Can I play that just so you, for all the haters out there, it is what she had to say. Thank you guys for defending me. Um, I promise I'm not upset. I'm okay. Lord. I was literally laughing, like, about how funny it was that everyone was jumping on him. Um, yes, he should have run hugged me, yeah. and he knows that, and he yes. feels terrible, but he's not a red flag at all. I love he's, her. He, I love her. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's the best boyfriend in the whole he's, world. Oh, he says he knows that. <laughs> he knows. That must be nice. That, to me, is what Six Foot Over looks like. Because six foot under has been exactly what it sounds like, six foot under. M nothing but horror and mort. Morte. I love how Hannah goes. Now here's a commercial for Liberty Mutual, which I think is absolutely hysterical because the character reminds me of another character that you sent in. And author Alice Walker talks with Gail about the color purple. <laughs> When hurting feet make you want to stop. As a struggling actor, I need all the breaks that I can get. At Liberty Butchamil. Cut. Liberty Biberty. Cut. Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance. So you only pay for what you line. Need. Action. Cut. You can't say that. Sorry. Is this where they're going to put the statue of Liberty? Liberty. Are we married to Mutual? Cut. Only pay for what you need. <laughs> liberty, 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 liberty. Our commitment. Now here's the upstage. Her new book is called Gathering Blossoms Under Fire. Why did you call it Gathering Blossoms Under Fire? Because I'm always being fired upon. And when you go out into the world and you do your work and often people don't understand it, they say very mean things and they do very mean things. So it is like being under fire. But they're always flowers. Alice Walker loves flowers. She reflects on the success of The Color Purple and her extraordinary life, and it is extraordinary, and her love. Yep, there are always the next generation to constantly think about as your life ticks up and down and wastes away. Um, it's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.